If you're watching this video, then most likely you are new to cryptocurrency mining, or maybe you have a little bit of experience, but you want to know other types of crypto mining, what mining is like this year and beyond. Those are the things we're going to talk about in this video. So it's going to start off with just an overview of the different categories of mining, and hopefully I'll even be able to introduce some new ones to you. So it all started long time ago, Bitcoin. Okay, it hasn't been that long. Bitcoin came out and introduced Bitcoin mining. And this is where you basically trade computing power. You know, I'm showing you a laptop, but that's really not what people mine Bitcoin with. And we're going to talk about what they actually mine Bitcoin with and some of the concerns around it. Then we're going to move on to some other alternatives such as GPU mining, CPU mining, hard drive mining, and so forth. So before we get started, I'm Caleb. This is Coin Breakthrough. We post videos every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Except yesterday. Okay, I'm sorry. I tried. And we are going to do our best to cover everything important in cryptocurrency. So if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in the crypto industry, then hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So Bitcoin mining, basically, it's where you trade computing power to support this network and you get rewarded Bitcoin. Although it may have started with people just turning on their computer, starting to mine Bitcoin, it has really transformed into a system where you get dedicated computers for Bitcoin mining that don't do anything besides Bitcoin mining. This concept is known as an ASIC, A-S-I-C, and these computers are way more effective at mining Bitcoin. So if you have an ASIC computer, well, then you're going to get a lot more rewards. So they are application specific, which basically means this computer is essentially useless beyond Bitcoin mining. This has led to some interesting situations. First off, it's really hard to get these ASIC miners, and to compete against them with normal computing power is unreasonable. So if you really want to get into Bitcoin mining, you have to get an ASIC miner. But all the companies that make these ASIC miners, they're first going to sell these to large companies who want to buy a significant number of these ASIC miners. So people like you and me, we might be able to get a second-hand ASIC miner or a previous generation, or if we're really, really lucky, we might be able to get a new release. But the majority of the hash power is going to be using the top-of-the-line ASIC miners, and it's unrealistic to compete with these miners unless you have the same level of ASIC miner. So this has led to basically computers that become essentially obsolete within a few years. They're essentially useless outside of Bitcoin mining and the new generation of ASIC miners outperform them significantly. So this is in a way led to the centralization of Bitcoin mining because only the largest corporations with the largest amount of money can buy these new ASIC miners. So I'm not saying there's no profitability or no chance that you can compete in Bitcoin mining. It has just become very difficult and not exactly what people originally thought Bitcoin mining would look like. So here is an example of a company that sells ASIC miners. And here is the example Antminer S19 Pro. And I would absolutely love to get my hands on one of these, but most likely the second they launch, they're going to be out of stock. But these are computers that large companies will basically fill warehouses with and that's all they will do is Bitcoin mine. Acquiring these miners is very competitive. For example, there was one from another company that came in stock and someone sent me that link immediately. By the time I visited the webpage, it was gone. So you either need to be botting or watching these websites literally all the time, subscribe to all the newsletters. There is a chance you can get them. It's just pretty difficult unless you want to go previous generation, which is significantly going to cut your efficiency and to compete, you're basically going to have to have numerous of these, which, you know, might not be the bad, baddest thing in the world, worst thing in the world, English, I don't know. So the next logical thought is, wouldn't it be ideal if we could mine cryptocurrency without these computers that are dedicated just for that purpose? That seems uh, wasteful, centralized, and just not really ideal. Well, that is where GPU mining comes in. So GPU mining uses graphic processing units. So these are most commonly used right now for Ethereum mining, and they're going to look something like this. So here is a 3080 listed on here for $2,600, which is outrageous, but these do produce income. So it makes sense people are going to be willing to pay a pretty high amount of money 
if there's a chance that it returns. So what is a 3080 actually supposed to be priced at? Well, the MSRP for a 3080 is about $700. And you can get these if you shop around for 2000 even maybe 1500 Or if you're really lucky, you might even be able to get them MSRP. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. A really popular way is with New Egg Shuffle. And basically, it's a chance for you to get products at a reasonable price. So I've actually, I've never managed to get, get one of these. But you can go in here once a day or whatever and sign up for the shuffle and have a chance of winning the ability to buy at normal prices, which is just crazy. Imagine a world where you have to enter a raffle to be able to buy something for full price. But that's because a card such as the 3080 is going to produce a significant amount of income by mining cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. A fair estimate for the profitability from a 3080 would be about $10 a day worth of cryptocurrency. This does go up and down. A really simple calculator that you can use is the nice hash calculator. So you can type in your graphics card there and it will estimate your daily earnings. Right now it says 8.67 a day. So that's even lower than what I just said. So like I said, it goes up and down just a day or two ago. This was at 12. Now you may have heard of nice hash before. This isn't exactly the same thing as GPU mining. Basically you give up your computer resources. Let's say you have a pretty decent computer. You say, hey, I'm going to mine for you and they pay you in Bitcoin, but whatever cryptocurrency they mine is totally up to them. So they're going to go for whatever's most profitable and then pay you for letting them use your computing resources. So if that doesn't tickle your fancy, there's another alternative, Hive OS, which is basically your one solution for all systems. So this is what most people are going to be using who get into GPU mining. A lot of people are uncertain about the future of GPU mining. The reason this is, is because for one, it's very hard to get graphics cards. And two, there are big changes in the major GPU mined cryptocurrencies, specifically Ethereum. So one change is EIP 1559, which we did a dedicated video on on this channel. That is something that is in the works and basically that's going to cut the amount of Ethereum rewarded to miners. So right now you might get 3.5 Ethereum if you manage to mine an Ethereum block by yourself. Typically it'll be pooled, but that's basically 3.5 per block and that's going to be cut closer down to two. So that additional 1.5 is from gas, and in this new update, the gas will be burned, and only the block reward of two Ethereum will be given to the miner. There is still an option for a priority fee, which can be given to the miners, but we don't really know how that's going to look, how much that translates to earnings to miners. So overall, people are looking at a cut of 40% to their earnings with GPU mining. And that's just the start because eventually Ethereum, in theory, is going to switch to proof of stake. And proof of stake is a completely different consensus mechanism and no longer uses GPU mining. So GPU mining is part of a bigger classification known as proof of work. So whether you want to get into GPU mining, that's totally up to you. I think if you want to just get started, do your best to find a GPU deal that is closer to MSRP. I think that is fairly easy. If you're only buying, you know, one or two or three GPUs, you can just search around and find them. However, if you don't want to spend that time and you want to say buy 10 GPUs up front, that might be a little harder to do unless you can find a supplier who's willing to sell GPUs in bulk, which 10 GPUs might not be considered bulk. You might have to buy like 50 of them, for example. The big concern with GPU mining is it generates a ton of heat and uses a lot of electricity. So you can't just plug 50 GPUs into the wall. It doesn't work that way. So you might have a, a rig of six GPUs and you put that on a circuit by itself and you might have the same thing on another circuit somewhere else in your house. So the next area of mining is hard drive mining. And the big player in this right now is the Chia cryptocurrency. So there have been other hard drive mined cryptocurrencies, but this one has really taken off the most. And their approach here is they're trying to be a more environmentally friendly version of Bitcoin, I guess you can think of it as that. So they don't even like to use the word mined, but they prefer the word farmed. 
However, farming is really a type of mining. So it's hard drive mining. Whether you call it that or farming, doesn't really matter. The point of it is we are going to be using hard drives to support the network. The more hard drive storage you fill, the more contribution to the network and ultimately the more reward you get. So this is where my channel really started. I started with a Chia build computer where I talked about the complete build for there's basically two steps, a plotting process and a farming process. The plotting process is fairly computationally expensive, nothing compared to GPU mining, but basically you're going to plot to fill these hard drives and then you farm from these hard drives, which uses very, very little electricity. So to maintain the storage that is farming costs very little. So supporting the Chia network is very cost effective and energy efficient. This is so new to so many people. And also, I don't really think the entire process is very streamlined and simple for most people. So this is really ideal if, if you're a little bit more technical, maybe familiar with some scripting or some computer hardware. It's not quite as easy as using something like NiceHash for GPU mining or just CPU mining, which is where you just start and the software does everything. For hard drive mining, it requires a little bit more effort on how to set it up, how to do the plotting, and the best way to farm from multiple hard drives. So in my case, I have 16 hard drives. That's not something you can just easily plug into a laptop. So you have to think about how you properly set this up. Now, I might be biased because I've done a lot of content around Chia, but I personally believe that this is going to be the go-to cryptocurrency mining project for most people this year. So if you want to get started with Chia, then you can check out some of my other videos, such as my Chia computer build video. One of the big challenges with Chia right now, which this should be fixed in the next week or two, so hopefully when you're watching this in the future, this is done, but Chia has to introduce a pooling protocol because imagine if you were trying to mine Ethereum by yourself, well, you would have to have a ton of graphics cards to basically have a chance at confirming an Ethereum block. Well, the same thing is happening with Chia, where if you have 16 hard drives, and they're all full, and say these are 16 to 18 terabytes, that's a lot of storage, but it still might take a very long time to actually win any Chia. Pooling needs to be introduced before I think this goes mainstream, but I'm personally working on a pool. You can find it at pool.space. That's our pool that we're working on, so if you're interested in Chia getting started, we have a big community around that, and overall it's pretty cool. If you're interested in getting started with Chia or hard drive mining, you can check out my affiliate link for Western Digital, calcur.tech forward slash HDD, and that's going to bring you to some very high capacity hard drives. Right now, these are in stock, but as the stock changes, I'll do my best to update the links to get you somewhere good. So you can buy a hard drive like this, plug it into your computer or into an external hard drive enclosure, such as something like this Sabrent USB enclosure which I have on my Amazon store if you're interested. And then you can use this to plot to um, as a temporary drive, which is slower. There are better options out there. If you want to spend more money, you can get into solid state drives, but technically you don't have to have that. So you can make this work with just a single hard drive and some way to connect it to your computer. If you have a desktop, you can probably just plug it in. But if you have a laptop, you'll probably need some way to connect it to either through a separate enclosure like this or find a USB hard drive that already has everything you need. I keep calling this an enclosure, but it's not really an enclosure. It stays unenclosed, but you guys get the point. The next category of mining is CPU mining. So it's very similar to GPU mining where the hardware used is actually useful for other things. So that makes it much less centralized than something like Bitcoin. And CPU mining is basically designed to be ASIC resistant and GPU resistant. The big player in this space is Monero. So to see an example of this, you can see the rankings for different hardware for mining Monero. And you can see the AMD Threadripper wins at 64,000 here. These things are not cheap, of course, but let's go take a look at the graphics cards, which, you know, here's a 3090, which also isn't very cheap, maybe half the price of a Threadripper. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really follow Threadrippers. It's out of my price range. So RTX 3090, well, this only gets around 2,000. 
So you can see these are on the same tier of pricing, basically really flipping expensive, but the graphics cards perform about 1 32nd of a really good CPU. I could see this to be a viable option for computers that might not have GPUs if they're just completely out of stock or impossible to get, but you have some really good CPUs laying around, then you could check out CPU mining. The next type of cryptocurrency, which I wasn't even sure if I wanted to include this in this video, but I ultimately decided to do it just so I could introduce potentially a new network for some of you. And this type of network is you're going to basically buy miners that will prove your location and connect to other miners across the world. So the big player in this space right now is Helium. I have two Helium hotspots and I have good and bad opinions about the Helium network overall. I think the entire technology is cool and I just want to see this built out more, potentially have some other networks that people could use because one of the big problems with this is to contribute to a network such as Helium, you have to have the Helium miners, which you can only buy from approved vendors from Helium. And these pretty much have all gone out of stock. So that's kind of lame. But if you are interested in trying it out, the one I recommend is the Bobcat Miner right now. You do have to check out with cryptocurrency, but I purchased one myself and overall the experience wasn't too bad. And I do have an affiliate link for that, which you can find at calcur.tech forward slash Bobcat. And that's going to bring you to the Bobcat Miner homepage. So this is an interesting concept and I think there's going to be a lot of new mining opportunities where you basically buy a plug and play system and it earns some cryptocurrency. This very well could be the future of cryptocurrency mining because it makes it so much more accessible to those who are not familiar with computer hardware or how to set up mining rigs. The helium hotspots are easy, you just plug them into the wall, connect them to Wi-Fi, and boom, you're mining cryptocurrency. It's a piece of cake. I'm personally working on a plug and play cryptocurrency solution and this is going to be really cool. I'll probably announce it on this channel soon. So if you want to hear the details of it, be sure to subscribe. But basically, this is something that you'll be able to acquire and just plug it in and start earning cryptocurrency. Obviously, when you're working with systems that are just plug and play, the competition is higher because there's very little work for the person who buys it. So you don't have to worry about optimizing or figuring out the best hardware or testing. You just buy it and plug it in. This has caused systems such as Helium to skyrocket in price and people are now selling them secondhand for like $10,000. The issue of why wouldn't you just buy one from Bobcat, for example, as opposed to buying one on eBay for $10,000, which I don't recommend. Well, there's a significant wait time of, you know, maybe three months. I'm personally still waiting on my Bobcat miner to come. And I guess we'll just see what the earnings look like at that time because I know there's, I think, literally hundreds of thousands of these miners waiting to be delivered to people. So the network could become diluted. But we'll just have to see. I mean, all opportunities ultimately find some level of equilibrium where the cost of the hardware gives you some level of return over a period of time. And if it's too slow, people don't want to do it, so there's less demand. If it's too fast, people want to do it, so there's more demand. That's why it's important to keep your eyes open, follow these networks, find them early, and get in on projects before they're oversaturated. So that's what we're trying to do on this channel. If that's what you're interested in, then be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. Peace out.